and we're back with another episode of the Skylander review. You know, it's a long time since I really play Skylanders. Like this is the first Skylanders I've game I've played since like 2014 or something, back when Swap Force released. And today we are releasing a Skylander YouTuber known as Two Wee Me, I think it is. Her favorite Skylander, good old Drobo. Now, my friend got Drobo, and I was very, very, and yes, I'm doing this after I've recorded one show. I was very, very jealous because I thought Drobo was probably one of the coolest. It's like a mecha dragon, like that's pretty cool. So, let's have a look with Drobo. He, my, my friend had him and my friend let me borrow him and use him and play with him a lot. When I got him, he became like my go-to Skylander. He is, he's got, every, like, pretty much he's got everything he needs, like... He's one of the Skylanders which has a flight ability which isn't, like, completely useless. I know that you've got to upgrade it to get to that point, but even still, like, it's not that useless. But then he, well, he does have a useless ability, like, I can lie, he does have one useless ability. Like, the damage he does is just insane, like, 14 on it, on, so I can hit twice for 14. And I hit for four on the like side blasters, and I hit for extra fours on the explosives. Try and get out of the fight. Look at the look at the blast damages. It's insane. Like, Drobot's crazy. I understand why it's like that two wee me's favorite Skylander, but there is. Something that I really do not like about this Skylander, and I'm, I'll explain that in a minute. Like, if I remember correctly, the series two Skylander, his wild power makes him like gives him something to do with like his blades, and his blades are not very good. Like, I don't care what his blades are bad, like very bad, like very rarely usable. Easy peasy, squeeze your lemons. Right, so we're going to talk about the robot. So, he's got a fire blaster which basically works like trigger happies, guns, or you can literally just hold it and he'll fire up, max fire up. Then he's got his tactical blade gear. So, you, you throw these blades which come out in like a, like your two diag, like come out in your two diagonals in front of you, which, you know, they're alright in the rich, like the rickish shear off, off them. Walls and stuff and hit enemies, but the only problem is once it hits an enemy, it don't it don't like hit an enemy and rebound. If it hit an enemy and rebound off an enemy, then yes, okay, fair enough. But it don't it, it it hits an enemy, then it it disappears basically. So that's not a very good ability. Thrust of flight. So this is a terrible ability at first. Like it's cool for getting you around, but it controls horribly. Like at least Sonic Boom's flight, you've got some control. This is this. It might just be me, but I've never I always have trouble even even now trying to use this and this isn't even the problem this is because then you get your next upgrade which they do increase damage which with his with his blasters already doing like a lot of damage anyway you don't really use in these unless you're in a corridor then you get this which obviously blasters do increase damage which is really good but then you get this hover mode which i actually really like because his flight is terrible and you can set you can essentially swap between speed and maneuverability like you can use your normal thrust of flight to get away or to engage and if you're struggling in combat, bang into your hover mode, and you can hover out while firing. This is a good ability. This is a very good ability. This makes his flight miles better. And then his last ability makes his flight miles better. Like, I'm not even tapping anything, and like I already go forward. Like this is how the flight actually handles it. And I'm holding like directly left on on the stick. Like you just don't turn that quick. Like the the normal flight doesn't. You best basically quick a clean out away and use the flight to escape. That's about all I can say for the flight. But when you're in your... You can literally weave in and out of enemies because you've got enough speed. You've got more than enough speed to weave in and out of enemies. Like, I'll actually literally give give him credit for this. They actually meant Drobot. Like, Drobot's got two abilities which make his flight good. He's got that one where he can hover. Uh, one where his flight then eventually does damage, which is, yes, his soul gem, which is kind of lame, but I guess I'd much rather have a soul gem, which makes his useless ability more useful. 
And then obviously they gave his wild power to his other ability, which was virtually useless. I say I can't like not say it's not good though because like literally you literally mow any if you got on a laser path you mow anything down like this is ridiculous. This is say so, thirty four damage like I do almost more damage than that in like a two second shot on this. And bearing in mind this is miles 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 more accurate as well. Nothing sta literally if you got on this skill tree which robot nothing stands in your will at all. I'll take that. Right, so now we're going into his path, so we're gonna go to the one which I didn't go into first. So blade gears do even more damage. To me that's not very good because you're very rarely hitting him at this point, so you're still only firing two. This is decent because it's like it, it'd be nice if they bounced off enemies but they don't. In this one essentially they hit an enemy and explode dealing like at AoE damage. That's not too bad. And then there's the, you can shoot three at once, which is actually quite good because not only do you throw the two at the side, you also throw the one in front of you. So you're at least guaranteed to hit one. This is really strong if you're down, like, for instance, if you're playing on Skylanders 1, obviously, and you're playing the Crypt missions, like, you know, where you're getting the Eternal Undead Source. These are really good because there's a lot of times where you're in, like, small rooms and you can just use these to clear out very easily. But then you can just do the same with this one. So Mega Blasters do increase damage, right? Compared to like these two are literally just the same ability. So you either upgrade your blaster or upgrade your gears. Personally, once you get to this point, I'd much rather have high damage blasters because I'll use that more. Then you move on to this one and blade gears explode on contact. I was like, whoa, okay, pretty cool. But then you go on to this and your blaster beams explode. Again, these are all just polar opposites. Like, so more damage, I'd rather have more beam damage. Explosive on my gears or explosive on my eye blasters, I'd rather have explosive on my eye blasters. So not only do I do more damage, I also explode dealing AoE damage. Then there's this one. So shoot three, so I get an increased to how many blade gears I fire, and then this I get increased laser fire. I'd much rather have the increased laser fire, especially if I've already upgraded these two. Like, there's not really much point in going down here unless you have two drill bots, or I guess unless you've got the, um, I think it's a series two one where it gets like the mega blade gear or something. So this skill tree is definitely the way to go. And then the last thing is his fly faster and after bonus damage enemies. Like, this is his soldier. Like, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, well, this is a pretty bad soldier. Like, a very bad soldier. But the damage it does isn't that bad. Like, it hits for 88 damage. That's like a lot. Pretty sure it hits for like a bit less in the older games because I remember they had to change the damage numbers because certain things have different health. But even in the other game, like, quickly weaving in and out of, of, of enemies, like, you can you can do quite a chunk of damage from with the after bonus. So. Not only can he have, like, if his afterburn is activated while he was hovering as well, that'd be just ridiculously strong. It's just, you can literally, I can literally just hold square and I'll finish this arena. So these bugs are real annoying, these are the time consuming ones. Easy. This is probably my easiest run through of it, like that's how strong Drill Boy is. Clearing hordes like it's no one's business, man. Easy. Like you can hit for crits for like 5 and 20 odd damage, like... How ridiculous is that? But in bearing in mind the damage numbers are a lot like different in the first game, so like... Drobot in the first game is an absolute monster, like he can literally wipe out chaos and everything. Like, if you go for like one of the harder trophies in the first game, which if I remember correctly is uh, defeat chaos without losing a Skylander or swapping a Skylander. Drobot for brute force is like where to go, but I'm pretty sure Terrafin's to go to because obviously Terrafin's got an ability where he can be invincible underground and do damage with his fin. 
Like, completely understandable why this Skylander is like Tui Mi's favourite, but <coughs> I'm willing to point out flaws on Robot as much as I actually genuinely love Robot. Uh, <coughs> his blades are not very good. Like, normally I'd be like, oh, he's got a flight ability, so that instantly makes him like no higher than a 3.5. However, his flight it becomes good with two upgrades, so that's fine. He's got two upgrades to increase his flight, that's fine. Like, that makes his flight useful. But then the, the, the issue is, like, okay, so he has one, so he's got three abilities that are useful at max level and max upgrades. Yeah, you could say that. His beams are good, and his flight is, again, very useful. <clears throat> but then his, his ricochet blades that just don't do enough damage, like, to justify using them. So you find yourself very, very rarely using them. And for me to give a Skyland, like, a 5, or at least a 4.5, it's got to be, like, they've got to be virtually perfect. You've got to be able to use, like, one skill path and still be able to use the other ability, like, without really that much problem. And you just kind of can't with Drobo, like, you choose the blaster path. Or you choose, like, I'm very, I literally only use the rickshaws in the arena just then, literally just to show people what there was. So I'm going to give him a, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. Because, yes, he's good and all. But, for the first game, like, his ricochet stuff doesn't seem to do that much damage. His beams are overpowered, like, ridiculously overpowered. And his, aft, and his flight is good, but at the end of the day, that's about, it's just still a flight. It's useful for maneuverability, and I guess it's good for some damage, but... When are you really using the afterburners as your main type of damage? Like, your, your blasters are your main foot source of damage. So he's the one just kind of there to clean up. But if it, it'd be an easy 5 out of 5 if his, if his blades uh, ricocheted off enemies and they could hit like a max of 3 enemies before despawning, but they can't. And it's a shame because he'd have been like probably the best Skylander from Generation 1 otherwise. But if you stayed around and watched till the end, thank you. I think 4 out of 5 is our highest ranked Skylander. And just to show that I'm not playing favourites, Whamshell is pretty much one of my favourite Skylanders of all time. Like, I literally spent like twenty pound to get a light call version of Whamshell because I couldn't find a version of him anywhere. So if you stuck around and watched, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.